Hi, I'm Jill Finley from Jill Lily Studio, and today I'm going to give you a little tutorial on making bias tape from your own fabrics. Bias tape is really useful in applique because it can make all kinds of things like vines. This little quilt I've got, bias tape um, has created some vines and stems on these flowers. Vines are great because they fill up a large area and um, it's very simple to do. And then I've got another quilt here that has used bias tape as lettering. This quilt is from my new book, um, Home Sweet Quilt, and the lettering on this quilt is all made using bias tape. The quilt behind me, you can see we've used bias tape for the stems on all of these blocks. And so bias tape is a great tool, and I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to start by cutting our strips on the bias. Now you know that the grain line runs parallel to the selvage here. We've got the selvage, so one grain line goes this way, and one grain line goes perpendicular to that across the fabric. I've cut just a little strip of fabric and we're going to use that. I place the, um, take my ruler and place the 45 degree line on the selvage edge. So I've got that lined up with the selvage and then just cut. And that gives us the line to cut from. So now I have a bias line and I'm going to put my ruler on here and measure from this edge and cut my strips. Now the width of the strip depends on which bias tape maker I'm using. I'm going to be using a 3 8 inch bias tape maker today, so I'm going to cut these strips 7 8 of an inch wide. And what I do to figure the width is double the finished size of the bias tape maker and then add an extra eighth of an inch, just a scant eighth. So I got 7 8 by doubling my 3 8 inch si uh, bias tape maker, doubled is 6 8 and then one more eighth, 7 8 If I'm going to use a quarter inch bias tape maker. I would double that. The finish size would be a half inch plus an extra eight, five eighths inch. So let's cut a few strips five eighths inch wide. And it's just a scant five eighths. So we, each of these strips are on the bias now because we've used that bias edge to cut from. Okay. We're ready to use our bias tape maker. All right, now I've got my bias strips that I've cut, and I brought them to my pressing surface. And I've got bias tape makers. I wanted to show you these. This is the 3 8 inch, and it's purple. That These are all made by Clover. And um, 3 8 inch is purple. The quarter inch is green. The half inch is yellow. They come either with this little handle on them or with the plastic. I prefer the plastic one, but the, either one of them, they work just fine. Okay, now I start by... We're using the 3 8 inch today, but I start by uh, spray starching my strips. And this is really important because um, I want starch in my strips so that they will hold their shape. And I can't add the starch after I've pressed them because then they'll unfold. So I've starched them and I'm going to press the end, just one end to dry the starch on that end. And then take that starched end and feed it through the bias tape maker with the wrong side up wrong side of the fabric up, and I'm looking at the colored end, then I turn it over, you can see there's a little slot here that I can use a pin or an awl to advance the fabric down to come out the end, and there's the fabric, let's move these out of the way. And then I pin this into my ironing surface to anchor it there, and then I can gently just pull, and as I pull the bias tape maker back this way, I stick my iron in there and press those folds. And you can just advance it along with your iron if you'd like, but just so you can see, see how that folds those edges as the fabric comes out at the other end. Great, now I've got bias tape. Now the prepared bias tape is really easy to shape. I use a steam iron, and because I have the starch already in my bias tape, when I steam it, it allows it to reposition, and it will keep its shape. So if, let's say I wanted to do just kind of a little vine. Now see that's shaped into the vine I want, and when I pick it up, it retains that shape, and I can attach it to my background of my quilt. Okay, let me show you this a couple more times, and we'll show it a little closer up. Remember, the first thing we're going to do is spray our strips with spray starch. This is very important because we want that starch in our strip so that it's, it keeps its shape well. Now just press one end so that it uh, stiffens and dries out the starch and then feed it through the bias tape maker with the wrong side of the fabric up. When I turn it over, you can see the fabric in the little slot here and I just advance it till it comes out the end and pin it into my ironing surface. 
and as I pull this along, the bias tape maker will create the folds, fold those two edges over to make bias tape. Once I've shaped my, my uh, bias into the position I want it, then I just attach it to my quilt block using my apple glue. I'm going to glue baste it in place. And that way I can stitch it without it shifting. And if you want to learn more about apple glue, there's a whole video on this product that I've developed. And now I want to show you how to make lettering using your bias tape. At the first of this video, I showed you a quilt called Berry Patch, and it's in this book. Um, included with the pattern in the book is some shaping diagrams for your lettering. Take this page to your copy machine and make a copy of it. I've got a copy right here. And take that copy paper right to your ironing surface. Take the bias tape that I prepared and place it right on top of the diagram and follow along it with the hot steam iron. Now you're going to give it a couple blasts of steam as you go so that it can reposition the fibers in that bias tape so that it can be the shape you need it to be. Let me show you one more. Let's do this B, this letter B. Sometimes to do a tight curve you may have to go over it two or three times to get the curve nice and tight. And I know you can't see very good there because my iron is in the way. Let me see if I can move up here. So, there we go. And then I would just trim it off right here. Once you have all your letters formed, you want to glue them down onto your background using Napa glue. If you need a little bit more information about that, there's a video on the apple glue on my website. Uh, once they're all glued down, you can stitch them either by hand or by machine. And you can purchase the little bias tape makers on my website or at your local quilt shop. And be sure to get some apple glue because I know you're going to need that. Thank you.